Hallelujah. Let us go into the word of God this evening. This evening, I word of confession, the power of confession. Let us read Bible, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. You know, the moment when you believe Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and confess with your mouth that Jesus is your God, you become a child of God. The power of confession. We were in the kingdom of darkness, but when we uh, revealed, when Holy Spirit revealed us, Jesus Christ saved us and delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. And those who ever believe in him, we will have eternal life. When we accept the gift of God, the gift of salvation, we become the children of God. And we come into his kingdom. Hallelujah. There is power in your mouth, in your comp confession. So as the way you enter God's kingdom is the way you will go on in it. The confession of the lips releases God's power for salvation. And this includes deliverance, protection, preservation, healing, and a sound mind. This is what salvation means. Each of us have a problem in lives, right? And we have enemy. The enemy of God became our enemy, the devil. His flaming missiles are aimed at everyone. When difficulty arises, it is usually because the devil has lured us into saying what he says about the problem instead of what God says, which is the solution. Now, so many bad things are happening around the globe, especially in our nation. Many news report what is happening, and all news are bad news. And... We are the reporters of God, right? We will report the kingdom's report. The enemy reports. Enemy is doing bad things. So many bad things happening. At the same time, since we live in the kingdom of God, we have a report of the Lord. Amen. Today, we will confess the reports of the Lord. Amen. So you need to uh, differentiate. Who reports will you believe? We shall believe the reports of the Lord. Amen. Will you do that? Will you do that for me today? Yes. Every day we will believe and we will confess the reports of the Lord. Because word changes circumstance or word change circumstances let us read proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit so words are containers of life or death and we are the ones who decide what will pass our lips. God wants our mouth to be filled with his words so they become a force to be reckoned with to silence the four and the avenger. In Psalm chapter 8 verse 2 said, 
Psalm chapter 8, verse 2. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the four and the avenger. As God's words proceed out our mouth, they change the prevailing circumstances. Hallelujah. So many people react against this saying, how can only words change my world? or my difficult situation. It can be done. It can be done. Some people say like that. Can it? Yes, it can. Hallelujah. Because it isn't only words. Proceed out our mouth as we speak by faith in Him. They are invested with exactly the same creative power as his words when he himself is speaking. That's why we need to agree what the Lord is saying to our situation. Romans chapter 4 verse, verses 20 to 21. Let us read Romans chapter 4 verses 20 to 21. It's, it's talking about, it is about Abraham. Abraham is our example. Let us read. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Abraham had received a promise that you are given going to have a son. He knew it was physically impossible. Circumstances were against him, as were common sense and feelings. He didn't confess his weaknesses, impotency or doubts. He was totally convinced that God would do what he had said. Hallelujah. Today, I bring the word of God to you. No doubt on his word. He will do what he said to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are not to act based on only what we hear, see or feel at the moment. We stand on God's promises. Like Abraham, we confess what God has told us. Even if we do not see it, at the, at the time and circumstances seem to point in another direction. When you look at the circumstances, all the situation, all the circumstances is going another direction. Very opposite to the promise of God, especially for the nation of Myanmar right now. But in this situation, what should we speak? Who do we believe? The Lord wants us to speak to the mountains. Hallelujah. We need to speak to the situation. We need to speak to our problem. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Jesus said, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will done for him. It will done for him. He shall have whatever he says. Hallelujah. So, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. There is power in your words. That is why we need to guide our life by the word of God. Amen. By the spoken word of God. By the prophecy of God. Hallelujah. When things become difficult, we declare or we stand on the prophecy. We stand firm onto his promises. Hallelujah. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 23. 
Hebrew chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he, pro for he who promised is faithful. For he who promised is faithful. You know, to confess means to say the same thing as. We are to say the same things God says about situations. No matter how they may appear, as we do, we pronounce the solution to the problem. And God can do the miracle. Hallelujah. Your part is to agree with the word of God, to confess the promises of God. His part is to, to make things happen. Hallelujah. He will bring what he said. But he needs us. We, we need to be strong in the Lord. Especially, in th we need to fix our eyes or we need to stand on his promises. Amen. When things are difficult, when the storm of life comes against us. Come and shake us. So many Shaking in the nation. If you are talking about the business world, merely survive, merely survive, and no small business at all. It is very difficult situation. Our GTP is minus eighteen. How about our health? We thank God that we survive Delta variant. Many people died. Many pastors over, I think, 170. It can be more than that. It's only, you know, in Chin pastors and leaders. Today is Chin National Day, so I speak for them. And another pastor and leaders, that's only in Christian world. Many our neighbors in our compound, you know, in our residence area, 30, I think 34 or 36 died in Delta variant. It was so difficult to live in this situation. That is why if you look at the health, hospitals, and our income, or education, two years now, we cannot run the government school. And if you look at the situation, it is so miserable. But in this time, we need to guide our life by the word of God. To confess the word of God. If we do, we pronounce the solution to the problem. Hallelujah. We will see the mighty move of God in our nation, in our country. We silence the devil. If you confess the promises of God. We need to silence the devil, right? How can we silence the devil? We need to agree with the Lord. We need to believe in the Lord. We need to fix our eyes onto the Lord. Because greater things are yet to come. Amen. Can you hear the sound of revival in our nation? Last five years ago, there will be a great revival in our nation. Nobody's, ah, it, how can it be? How can it be now? Many people, they are, you know, they are crying out to God. Many people respond to the love of God. Many people come to know the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. 
in this difficult hours, in this difficult situation, right now in the nation, in my country, <laughs> in my country. Hallelujah. So I want to declare what the Lord is going to do in very near future. Let's go back from the last four years, okay, 2018. Prophecy, a prophetic word from a prophet Samuel to our nation. He visited at our church and he wrote down on the plane or in the plane and he received this word and he passed it to me with his handwriting, okay? So we translated into Burmese and, and we, we, we made PowerPoint slide today. So let us all read together. He is, the Lord is talking about the peace, ancient battlegrounds with many, multiply, ancient altar of amity, an ancient blood pool of many innocent people crying for revenge, ancient spirit congregating, making demands for blood repayments. And th this time he heard. I heard the Lord says, I will establish my altar of peace in midst of Myanmar. Do you believe that? I will destroy the altars that makes them venerable and I will silence the voices that makes demands on the land. I will unite them and take away suspicious mistrust from them and I will make them sit together as one people. Hallelujah. I declare the Prince of Peace, the peace of God will reign in our nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God already spoke about the peace in the land. And he, or, he already spoke about the business world. Let us read another prophecy. God is making Myanmar a center of industrial agriculture revolution in the continent of Asia. I want to join this prophecy with uh, Prophet Ben Lim last two or three days ago. Through DUMC, he prophesied over our nation. And what he said is the uh, agriculture product and meat and like seafood and all the product, like food product, will be healthier and better and bigger. Hallelujah. So I strongly believe that God is making Myanmar a center of industrial agriculture revolution in the continent of Asia. So if you pray about the business, if you pray about the industrial, if you pray about the agriculture business, please believe God is making. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is changing our land. Hallelujah. God is making this agriculture industrial revolution in the continent of Asia. God is making Myanmar a center of Agriculture, industrial revolution. Hallelujah. In the continent of Asia. I strongly believe that. I believe that's why I speak. And he is talking about also rediscovery of many precious minerals, metal, all and abundant all in abundantly stupendous quantities. And what he said, you have been noted as a rising force with a global voice. And let me read the pro prophecy uh, number nine. I see economic financial growth. We speak in the land that will make Myanmar as a hub center for prosperity in Asia. Amen. Number 10. God is making Myanmar beautiful and more attractive in global affairs. The nation will become more favorable towards you. But be careful as well. Many investors and tourists will flock into this nation because God is opening you up. Hallelujah. 
You all know how the business is going about the hotel and tourism, right? But what the Lord is saying is more important. Amen. You need to speak life. You need to speak to the situation right now. Hallelujah. Many investors will come. Many tourists will flock into our land. Because the Lord is making Myanmar beautiful and more attractive in global affairs. Hallelujah. Number seven. He is already talking about a revival. Number seven. I see a a a release of revival in kingdom proportion, and there will be a deep hunger for God in His kingdom. Number eight, Myanmar will be a seed of godliness in Asia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's going to be a great revival in our land. There's going to be awakening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, rising generation set apart for liberty. The Lord is raising. The Lord is making. Oh, giants. Hallelujah. To come out. To take their place. Hallelujah. And they will become the revolutionists. Amen. They will change the, uh, the spiritual atmosphere like Elijah. Amen. Hallelujah. They will change the beliefs of our nation like Elijah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I strongly believe that. And not only that, I see a godly 11. I see a godly generation arising that will change the fortunes, dynamics of Myanmar in a position direction that will affect every sector of her economy. Seven mountains. Joshua, Joseph, Daniel. Hallelujah. Jehu. Hallelujah. So many young people, new leaders. And... Prophet Ben Lim prophesied about women leaderships. Amen. That is very new to us. Women leaderships. On seven mountains, many women, they will take their place. And they will become entrepreneur or they will, they will take their place in the business world, in the political world. And they will be a great blessing to our nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I prophesy many young, many uh, women, many younger generation, rise up. Rise up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Rise up and speak up and take your place in Jesus' name. Now is the time. We are living in the prophetic hour. Amen. This was four years ago. And what he said is, within five years, in a five-year time, pray that this, this prophecy will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. So this is the time. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe and I'm praying every day. Hallelujah. And God is visiting Myanmar like a flood. It shall quick and it shall be sudden. This will shock the world. Now what is happening in that nation, it's, it's shock the world, right? But <laughs> greater move of God is coming. It will be like a flood. It shall be quick and sudden. Nobody uh, can believe that. Wow, wow. When the Lord is visiting us, hallelujah, the whole world will shock. Amen. Christianity, 13, Christianity will spring forth a vegetation in the wilderness. And like rivers in dry places, the Lord will cause Myanmar to be more powerful. Pronounced in global matters, she shall be a power for shaping destinies and calm direction to nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will become, I believe, we will become superpower nation. Hallelujah. 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 And God said, Myanmar must reposition, restructure, and the divine visitation will be sudden, unexpected. For people, unexpected. For me, every day is, I am very expected. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I I wait upon the Lord every day. I Lord, I I believe what you have said over our nation. Whatever happens, Lord, you will do great and mighty things in the situation. You will intervene or you will come and change the situation around. Since this year, a word from the Lord uh, gave over to our senior pastor, 2022 is the year of turn around blessing. Hallelujah. So, reposition, restructure, reestablish. Hallelujah. Divine visitation. Amen. And Myanmar will become a Christian nation. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, it will happen. Amen. I believe. I believe it. Hallelujah. That's why I speak it. And 15 and 16 and 17, okay? There will be groups, nations who will try everything they can to disturb, destabilize Myanmar. But they shall fall, fail, cause it's the Lord who is doing all these things for his love for the nation. Myanmar will be a nation of great peace in Asia. And what the Lord said, I love Myanmar, for I have opened my arms unto her. I will walk with her like a father friend. Don't forget my love. Don't take my love for granted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when you pray, you need to pray on the promises of God. Hallelujah. And speak, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. You will do great and mighty things in our nation. I believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Another prophetic word from Cindy Jacobs. Cindy Jacobs, can you show me the... Okay. It was last year, one year ago. Okay. On February 12, 2021, our Union Day. Okay. So let, let me read for you. Nema will be a shining star in all of Asia in the coming days. Hallelujah. See yourself. I'm shining. I'm shining. Hallelujah. Because the Lord already spoke over us. There's going to be a great revival in the land and it will be a historic. It is very similar to the earlier, you know, pro prophecy. Many people will going to come to the Lord. People from around the world will study about the revival in Myanmar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord say, it's time to create more discipleship programs and raise up more leaders. Because in the coming days, there's going to be many, many new believers. I strongly believe that. Amen. Now, many churches, they are running online courses. Many believers, they are, you know, now they only uh, focus on the Lord. Many people study the word of God. Former time, uh, it is, are you going to uh, be a full-time minister? Yeah, you, you, you should go to the uh, theolo theolo theological school or Bible seminary. But now, many believers, young and old, even children, you know, Teenagers in our church Bible school, grade 8 student, <laughs> grade 10 student, <laughs> they are very smart. <laughs> so when, you know, when they uh, do the exam, oh, they are 100, 99, or 96, they are very smart. <laughs> they are very good student. So I, I thank God. If our situation is not like that. We will not learn the word of God. Hallelujah. So let us continue. So there's going to be a children revival. Children will going to have visions, dreams, and angelic visitation. So pray over your children that they will have dreams visions and even angels will visit them hallelujah and great miracles will be done through their hands through their hands they are not just drawing pictures everywhere in your house <laughs> there will there will be a channel for the miracles hallelujah healing deliverance salvation they will bring their friends to the lord 
they will rise up and speak the word of God. Hallelujah. In school. Amen. When, when, you know, when they are playing, they will talk about, you know, the love of God, the salvation of God. Hallelujah. I strongly believe that. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us continue. And I see God is raising and also using the very special way to have great, incredible move of God among the youth. And I know you are in the very difficult situation right now. But the Lord show me and in the midst of this, one of the greatest moves of God that have ever known in the history. This revival taking place, it will be an incredible movement and it will be a historic. Amen. Amen. They will hold the Bible. They will bring the word of the Lord. They will speak good news. They will heal the sick. They will do, you know, great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Signs and wonders, miracles will perform through their hands. Hallelujah. There will be a, a great awakening in the young people. Amen. Let us continue. This is what the Lord says. You need to tell to the situation, right? Hey, Satan, listen. You thought that you would win in Myanmar. But the Lord said, I have a plan to bring, to bring a great release and freedom in the country. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, I see what the enemy is trying to do in the country, but I have a great plan. And the Lord says, I will see my greatness manifest. Uh, you will see my greatness manifest. Even though for a season it looks dark. Yeah. Darkness everywhere right now. You will see in the future that in the suddenly moment, I will change everything. Hallelujah. Amen. What happened will be so miraculous. It will be worldwide news of the goodness of God in the nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? I encourage all of you, please save this prophecy and declare every day. Confess. You know, the power of confession, the power of confession, it is very important in the kingdom of God. We need to agree with God. We need to speak the same as God says. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you do that? Will you do that? God will, if we confess with our mouth, he will bring miracles. Even the Lord already promised us, speak to the mountains. And he will move the mountains for us. The Lord doesn't, you know, told us that, uh, tell us that. Speak about your problems. Speak about, complain about your situation. No. The Lord told us, speak to the mountains. Speak to the situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His word will bring life. It will carry miracles. We will see our God greatness manifested. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we all rise up? So don't forget today to confess the power of confession. We will sing one song. It is also the confession. We agree and we believe with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen.